let us now look at the bias component. And let me explain now why I've put in several places here the word possible. The point is that determining the true bias of the procedure is not easy. It needs a lot of parallel measurements under carefully controlled conditions. And if the number of measurements is not very large, then the bias estimate always will be mixed with random effects. So that the bias will also contain contributions from random effects. And it can easily happen that in fact the procedure does not have any bias at all. But simply we are not able to separate the systematic and random effects because we do not do enough measurements. And making many, many, many parallel measurements can be impossible for practical reasons. Therefore, what often happens is that we don't really know if our procedure has a bias or not. But we quantify our non-knowledge of the existence of a bias via the new bias uncertainty component. Now, uh, if we were looking at the random component, the URW component, then I did not specify anything about the sample. The sample there could be just any sample. Here it's different. For finding bias, we certainly need a reference value. We've seen in an earlier lecture that this bias actually is a numerical estimate or numerical quantification possibility of trueness. And whenever we speak about trueness, we always need a reference value. Meaning, for bias determination, we now need samples or need materials where we know, at least from some kind of information, how much of the analyte is inside. And in broad terms, there are four different possibilities how bias can be found. The first of them is that you have some sample and the sample is analyzed with your procedure and then with a reference procedure. And that reference procedure preferably should have low uncertainty and high reliability. This is an excellent way, but unfortunately very often such reference procedure is not available. And therefore, it's unfortunately not very often used. The second one, which is actually also quite good, is that you buy certified reference materials. And certified reference material means material, which is very much like your real sample, but where the contents of certain analytes are known very reliably. And they have been determined by expert laboratories using high-level analytical techniques. And now the reference values of the certified reference materials are well suitable as reference values for bias determination. The next possibility is to participate in the interlaboratory comparison measurements. In the interlaboratory comparison measurements, the organizer always eventually announces the so-called consensus or reference value so that again you will have a reference value for your sample. But unfortunately, in most cases in interlaboratory comparisons and in almost all cases where they are of the so-called proficiency testing type, the reference values are found from the results of the participants. And since there are always quite different levels of participants and some of them are perhaps not so good, then these reference values, or usually as they called consensus values of interlaboratory comparison measurements, cannot be called very reliable. And if interlaboratory comparisons are used for bias estimation, very often overestimated bias is the result. And finally, it is also possible to estimate bias from spiking experiments, meaning you have some kind of sample in your laboratory, or even better, you have a 
sample matrix, blank matrix, where there is no analyte inside, and then you add a well-known quantity of the analyte into that matrix, and then you determine by your analytical technique whether you get back as much as you added. And the difference between how much you got and how much you added is the bias. Now, let me draw your attention to this word repeated. Repetition is very important in bias determination simply because uh, otherwise your bias estimate will contain a fair share of random effects in it. Therefore, always for determining bias you have to carry out several repeated determinations. And furthermore, bias can change from matrix to matrix, and also bias can be dependent on concentration level. Therefore, ideally you should use several different reference materials, or several different proficiency test results to estimate your bias, so that you finally would get some kind of averaged bias of your procedure, and that you could avoid that your bias will be grossly underestimated or grossly overestimated. Let us see now how we calculate this bias component. The main equation is presented here. So U bias is found as a combination of two uncertainty components. This RMS bias accounts for the average bias in your laboratory. I will show on the coming slides how it is calculated. It basically is the averaged bias value. And this component, UCREF, takes into account the average uncertainty of the reference values. So, as you remember from earlier lectures, all reference values are different from true values in that they have uncertainties. And these uncertainties are accounted for by this component here. And now here are given some of the equations that you are going to need. So each and every separate bias value is calculated like this. So it's the concentration found in your lab minus the reference concentration will give a single bias value whereby this C lab I should be determined from repeated measurements. So that each of these bias values in turn should come from repeated measurements. And then you should get several bias values, preferably from several different reference materials or several different interlab comparisons. And finally, the RMS bias is found as follows. You take all your bias estimates that you obtained, you take all of them to the square, you sum all of them up, divide by the number how many bias estimates you had, and finally take square root. And averaging via this procedure, as you see here, is called averaging via the root mean square approach. And this is where the RMS comes from. Quite similar situation holds with this UC ref. If the bias determination is carried out with certified reference materials, then this UC ref can be found from the certificate of the certified reference material. If bias determination is carried out by interlaboratory comparisons, and if the values, the consensus values on the interlaboratory comparisons, are determined from the participant results, which is the most common way, then the UC ref can be estimated as follows. This here is now the standard deviation of the participant results in the interlaboratory comparison. And this here is the number of participants in this particular interlaboratory comparison. And for every interlaboratory comparison this UC ref i is found. And separately UC ref i's are also found for different reference materials or for other approaches that I mentioned in the previous slide. 
And finally, you see ref i values are averaged, averaged exactly the same way as we saw here by the root mean square procedure, meaning all of them are separately taken to the square. Squares are summed and divided by the number of u c ref estimates that you have. And this is the average uncertainty of the reference value. And let me once more stress that if the number of bias estimates is too small, if this n is too small, then our bias estimate will include a large share of random effects in it and the bias can be overestimated. If it happens, and this is an unfortunate situation, that we have only one single certified reference material for bias estimation, but we can do several bias determinations with it, then the U bias formula changes a little bit. So this RMS bias squared and U C ref squared remain the same, but in addition we have to bring in an additional term, which is the standard deviation of the bias values obtained and this is how many bias determinations were carried out. So such additional term has to be brought in if only one single certified reference material is used. And again, as it was in the case of uh, the random component, the URW, preferably the bias should be estimated separately for different matrices and also, if very different concentrations are used, then also separately for different concentration levels.